day 19. Welcome everyone. I'm listening to some music. It's a little bit uh, different by Spence. It's the, from the YouTube audio library so that my copyright doesn't send me into Facebook jail or YouTube jail. So we're going to do leadership and leadership moments and four relief art techniques that will help you with become successful. Just a minute as I... Okay. That's one easy way to do it. Just fold the page. Ta-da! Oh, I was thinking about uh, yesterday's presentation and wow was that ever packed full of information when I realized that um, relief art was so vast I mean re the relief art that I'm talking about is um, done on a flat canvas but there are four different kinds of techniques when it comes to um, plaster relief art or plaster creating art with plaster and so what we were doing was a plaster relief art. And um, I demonstrated how to do that with a specific, um, with a specific uh, paste. If you refer back to my video, you'll know which one that is. And, um, and um, how to get a layered effect. I talked a bit in some other videos about layered effects and um, I'm always interweaving with leadership. I'm saying, why is leadership, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> why is leadership so important? In the arts, it's important because let's, let's talk about character. We are the product. We sell ourselves. The art is just something that connects others to us and our beliefs, our values, our character, the stories we tell, the colors we share, why they're important. And so I wanted to give you some food for thought every time I go into the arts because I connect the both. This morning, I was thinking about what John C. Maxwell talks about in The Law of uh, Ladder, chapter nine. You'll see me referring over here but in what the law of ladder talks about character and um, developing our character is an inside job. It's related to our growth. And as an artist, I, I at one time did nothing but blue art. I just sat with the dark blue thalos. Now what has happened since I've been investigating in the various techniques of art is that art form has switched over to bright, brilliant colors. My communication has changed and the way I connect to people has changed. And that is all on an inside job. So let me read this, um, this part to you. Character growth determines the height of your personal growth. That's the law of the ladder, and that's on page 144 from the 15 laws of growth. Proverbs, in the Proverbs, uh, the writer said that as we think in our hearts, remember that one about heart to head that I did with you? There's an actual exercise that I do that, that just gets us there real quick. So when we think from our hearts, so we become. Isn't that powerful? All these images that I think in my head, if there were only images and not words, I would like to share my story with people as they look at, at the um, art themselves. Standing there looking at my piece, and here I get an opportunity to help you, help inspire. Any little little growth is better than zero. Would you Would you agree with me? Any little technique that we can pick up will amplify what you're doing with your art, okay? So growth is an inside job, and it's an analogy to the relief art, the plaster relief art that I'm going to show you. And I've done this a few times, but I've learned so much more this next round. And I wanted to tell you the four important art techniques 
And as in when we're learning and growing, there's always something that we can better about the way we present ourselves, but also about the way we present our art. Those of us who are creative, art in the kitchen, art interior decorating, art wood carving, art, I can go on, art is architecture. You look around, you see these beautiful buildings and look at the um, Alberta Museum downtown. Of course, it's eye captivating. There was somebody that had a vision and worked with a team and creative people like us do this all the time. And it's unfortunate that we have to classify under just artists, right? Because when I think about interior decorating, there's furniture and the furniture, the wood pieces have been carved and it goes all back. Some of this trails back, like the plaster relief work is related to wood carving. You can connect it to that, is related to how it's painted. And so I'm going to get started while I'm all excited because... I have the buffalo that um, I'm just going to refresh our memories. The buffalo that I, I took a picture of yesterday and put up here, if I can find it on my screen. And most of you that have uh, technicians will have somebody, somebody doing this for you. I'm a small business, so uh, I will. Okay, here we go. It's just me, myself, and my cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the buffalo, and uh, we look at it and we see, to see that it is definitely a photograph. And like the bear, I'm going to show you one more time, just to refresh, because some of us weren't on yesterday or we're catching up on all. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this buffalo so I could show you this. Okay. And I demonstrated and told you, uh, shared with you a little bit about the textures and um, I didn't get to the painting because what we did together was I talked about plaster relief and how it's done. It's so simple and as well as the raised effect. You can either do sort of like an inlay where it's deeper or a taller layer which is like um, cake, cake um, piping I, I mentioned, right? just gonna put that on the floor okay so what I need to do in order to talk about the four essentials of art um, plaster relief work is bring you down to my table and talk to you a little bit about the um, the materials and the tools this is important because the way when I go through it really quickly and I want to I value your time I present what is in front of me today I thought I'd add and if you have any questions about these tools what they are or the pace or how they're used or anything I can do a day 20 day 21 with that particular technique give me some guidance don't mind if you're curious okay I'm gonna pop you down to my camera here it's on my iPhone Okay. Now let's talk about the buffalo. Yesterday, I started, I sh began to show you, in just a sec here, moving some things around. I'm on a small table as well. Okay. This is texture created by this small little bottle. Okay, that was the technique and um, with the paste yesterday. Uh, step one, some of you will note, or you know, some of you may want, I really don't want to do too much sanding because what I did with the bottle in the raised effects here, whoops, my hands here, oh, I really love how it came out. In here, I'm going to be painting and if I'm unsatisfied with the the eye, I may fill this with plaster. But for now, when I talk about inlay, it's anything that ha goes into the work. Okay? And so we have have a raised effect. I did a layer 
and then on top of that later I layer I piped and I finished the piping and then I did the horn but if you could see and just give me a second here the horn has a little crack in it no big one because that's when you pile it too thick what you can do is and moving it here what you can do and this is just horrible moving things around okay what you can do is fill that with the the paste that we used yesterday uh, the joint compound with your finger now I didn't go for this is a second layer that I piped in I didn't and it it just connected itself and I used my finger to smooth it out but I didn't do much more than that okay oops now we're going to go through tools first real quick because I'm going to be using them right there are carving tools mine are dusty and when I look at this like I said I am satisfied for those of you that um, do just the first layer and want to dry it my tools are a little rusty they've been um, they need that's another show where you sharpen and clean them up there's a specific te technique to do that so you can use your wood carving tools uh, there are different names for each one of these tools which I also won't get into but uh, um, if you're a wood carver and you'd like to do this um, this is great once it dries um, the the outcome of what you're going to do is spectacular um, one thing I would mention though is to have a vacuum cleaner right beside you so that while you're you're scraping and carving in the lines of whatever you're doing that you can vacuum it ultimately right off the board okay so this is another if you're curious about the tools please drop a comment any comments go down into the comment field I can't follow up if I don't know what you want yes the questions okay this is a sanding spud sponge and I try to get it up to the to the camera you can get this from Home Depot it's interior design stuff and um, it's really really it's used a lot with drywall your corner beads and that kind of thing we won't go into the uh, terminology of that but for the arts it's perfect um, what you want is a, is in this a smooth surface so for example if you run your fingers around anywhere on your plaster and you have sharp bits you might want to sand that because when you paint once you paint this uh, there's no going back like what I did here was I sanded a little bit and I don't want to turn on the um, uh, <laughs> the vacuum cleaner so I will deal with that after I get off but as you can see it smoothed that area out so that it doesn't look uh, like it has pock marks in there or chip marks and you want to do this gentle because plaster or joint fill is really nice and soft which is the other reason why artists just love doing this art form we don't have a lot of us won't have full, full walls to just sample this on you can also buy drywall break it into pieces score it and um, and uh, make your art form or you can do this on canvas and so that is one carving tools two sanding sponge your vacuum cleaner would be one number three while sanding you may want oh I love these blush brush this is given to me it's for everything I use it for painting blending you know it's it's my favorite and I'm apt to go out and get like some more oh it's it's made my life so artistic creation so 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 great so um and then I go with the so 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 
You want to brush this off like that. See why we need a vacuum cleaner? It goes in the air and it, you don't want that in your lungs. Okay, this can always be washed, washed again and again. Okay, let's pretend we're done with the, uh, the sanding. I am. Okay, I'm not going to touch that for the horn for till later. Just suck here. I don't know what's going on here. This my um, camera. It slows. It lags sometimes. Okay. Now I have a picture that I'm going to follow for the painting in terms of the layer. I'm also going to show you one more acrylic glazing because now. Okay, we've covered sanding. We've covered carving, the carving tools, and um, the base, co base coat. Some artists will paint it all white. I don't, because I don't want the white seeping up through the background into the other layers. Um, for me, it muddies the colors. It's also what I've discovered with the black. You need to experiment with the colors on this, even if you do some small swatches or whatnot, like doing small pieces of um, plaster. But for now, we know, like, when you experiment, try putting black on and blending your colors on top, or dark blue, or pink. It's the only experimentation that will actually give you the, the, the experience that you need in painting something else on your canvas. Like working with this buffalo and, and describing the layering to you is really, really important. Okay? So I'm not going to put a base coat, but most of the artists that I've seen do a base coat of some kind. I'm going to build from top up with different colors and I want to be able to blend them to obtain the correct color in the depth. So in the painting itself there are approximately and I'm figuring about four layers and I have poured some some um, I have poured some paint but I just I'm not going to do the whole thing with you But I am going to show you, give you a small demo. Okay. Um, <laughs> I need to pop up the buffalo. Um, well, I'm not sure if that buffalo is going to show up. We're going to sure find out. Aha, yes, there it is. Okay, so I popped up the buffalo. And let's see if I can work around that. I'm going to move the comments. Okay. This eCam is one wonderful vehicle to do this. All right. You see the nose is down here. And um, the I'm not going to do the nose, but I'm going to try to work in this area. Okay. So as I see color, and this liquid glazing is something that you would use in the second and third layers. What it does is when you add it, it thins out the acrylic paint and, and um, it looks like gel-like and that's how you obtain depth and transparency. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and need a little water. And I can't... Uh, I can do just a small demonstration for you today. And the plaster will is gonna gonna take up it's going to take up quite a bit of your water, so you'll have to keep your your brush moist, as moist so that and keep dipping it in the water, give it a watered effect. Remember you can always build up. And I also noticed that there's some darker, darker colors. So what I'm working with here, 
Now my buffalo is in the way. Is mm -hmm. I'm on a learning curve today. We are going to get rid of buffalo so that I can show you. Okay, I'm using white, brown umber, cyana, solid bronze, which I call copper, and did I say black? Um, I've started with the sienna and burnt umber. So I use the dark, generally what I do most, most of the time is I start with dark colors. Because with dark colors I can always uh, um, add lighter like whites or add darker color like a blackened color. And then I begin to, looking for my buffalo again, then I begin to move it kind of around. Oh, what happened to here? I've got a little bit of copper and you just see that that darker space it's sitting on the higher part of the the item or the um, design so oops I put the wrong one there I think you're probably getting the gist of how much work I need to do yet. You see that? You see what is um, happening right here. This is the part that I really love but I want to get the whole piece into the um, sienna that I was talking about and water that down and fill those fissures that I intentionally created with the piping. So with that being said, I will uh, pop up the, the painting when it's, it's, when it's developing. It may take me all day. This is something that's not going to take like um, a couple of hours because of the layering is really important in order to pop it. Okay, trying to get us back up here. Hey! There's quite a bit. So, again, the four keys or the four, the four um, steps that you would use in relief art were as the carving and with the vacuum cleaner and the sanding that needs to happen to smooth out the rough areas that you carved the base coat you can use white you the base coat is one color you just fill the fissures and the, a lot of artists do this to fill the, the bubbles and the pinholes and um, sometimes the uh, small little fissures the cracks because the acrylic paint will seal it and then there's four, I said approximately four layers of paint. And what I do is I go from light or from dark and I, the darker color, which is your burnt umber, to blending with uh, the sienna and adding copper and going back to adding the um, burnt umber and sometimes a hint of black. And it depends on the white and I may use yellow at some point for where the light hits the fur. And so those are a lot of things to, to consider and as well as using the, the tools, the, uh, the materials, acrylic glazing liquid. I hope that that has been helpful and um, any questions that you may have, I enjoy. Pop them down below and if you've liked this video, please share it with the friend with your friends so that it gives them an experience of what it what we can all come together as a community, especially during this time. Last, if you have an art form, a relief art, relief art already created, 
sitting in your stash. Let us all see by dropping them in and sharing that with us. We would truly enjoy it. And if you really like this and you want to subscribe to my um, daily lessons, you can pop on over to nativestudioart.net slash art dash classes. I'll stick that in the comments below. And uh, I hope that you have an awesome and rocking day. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye for now. Love you all. Mwah.